AI affect the future of business? That's a critical question. I would counter with, how is it not going to affect the future of business? I mean, let's put it this way. Imagine that you had a crystal ball back in the noughties when uh, computers were traditionally disconnected in offices around the world. The internet didn't really exist. It was just happening as bulletin boards or simple kind of email services. But you had access to a vision of the future that told you that new services like something called Amazon were going to arrive, where you could get logistics uh, shipped around the world in, in uh, lightning speed time, that you could order products and get them delivered, not just the next day, but in some places in the, uh, in the, in the West, so, some of the big cities in London, for example, the same day that services like Blockbuster, which at that time would have been really familiar on the high street, would just fail and no longer exist and be replaced by mega corporations like Netflix and again, Amazon and, and something called Google would come along and lots of other search engines that you've never heard of before. Imagine that you had that knowledge, that you were able to look into the future and predict all of that. How would that have changed your business? How would it change your workforce, what you skill them in, the kinds of people that you uh, employ, where you want to operate from, how you interact with your customers, what services you offer your customers? Well, that's the state we're in now. AI is as big, arguably bigger than the dot-com boom or the invention of the computer. This is how species level important this innovation is. But ironically enough, and in line with my 30 days of AI, of AI speech, I actually asked this question to an AI. So let's see what their answer is. I did ask them to keep it short. So a four line answer, please, I wrote. Okay, so the question is, how will AI affect the future of business? And the AI said, AI is expected to have a significant impact on the future of business, leading to increased efficiency and cost saving through automation and improved decision making. That's interesting, it affects leadership too. A AI will also enhance the customer experience through personalized recommendations and support. Additionally, AI is expected to give rise to new business models. That's critically important. So you've probably heard this before, the jobs that AI is going to bring to your businesses, some of, so, some of them haven't been invented yet. And it's going to create new opportunities for growth and innovation. And uh, it's up to you, which answer do you prefer, the human one or the AI one? How, how can we ensure that the processes and tools of the AI uh, revolution remain ethical? So the ethics of AI uh, is really the talking point of the moment. You might be aware that there are certain signatories to a letter, um, one of which is Elon Musk, uh, which is where all the headlines come from. Um, and the letter is asking for a pause in the development of AI. In fact, who knows what, when you watch this video, that pause may have been initiated. We don't know. It might sound strange to you that in our current stage of late capitalism and, and the ways that we do business, that pausing innovation might seem impossible. But actually, there are, there are several historical precedents for uh, slowing things down, pausing, putting a moratorium on development of various critically important um, technologies. For example, um, chemical and biological weapons, uh, nuclear weapons, the proliferation of nuclear weapons, as you know, is subject to various treaties. Um, and perhaps most analogous to the development of AI, I think uh, developments that came from the Human Genome Project, so human cloning, uh, it, it's been agreed through most of the countries on Earth, probably all of them, um, that uh, we don't pursue human cloning at this point in our evolution. We're quite good at coming together as a species and agreeing uh, to make the right decision. And I wonder whether that might um, be the way we go forward with AI. The reason it's important, the reason the ethical question is so important is to do with the rapid nature of growth in AI. And so you need to understand fundamental level that AI evolves exponentially. So you might be familiar with exponential growth in terms of things like Moore's law, but when AI uh, evolves, it evolves very, very quickly. If you set the task of the AI on improving itself, um, change can happen very quickly, almost to the extent where we can't control it and we don't have the moral, ethical frameworks in which uh, in which to work. So that, that's why the ethics is a particular problem. It will be rapid, it will be, uh, it will be fast, it will be problematic. And so I think we need to think very carefully about AI's ethical dimension. What is the next big thing in technology? This has got to be the number one question that I get asked. 
uh, as I travel the world doing various speaking engagements. And um, it has changed, it's evolved. My answer has evolved over, let's say the last 10 years. Um, I used to talk about blockchain. I would talk about um, crypto. I'd talk about quantum computing. Uh, I always talk about automation and I would, I would use that in this answer. I do think that the automation of vehicles, self-driving vehicles will be huge and huge in ways that we don't immediately imagine. For example, there is a crisis in the retail sector at the moment. So big warehouses with tills at the front, which is what the big stores are on the high streets, certainly around the UK, are no longer serviceable. Um, and that's simply because uh, obviously certain companies can deliver products to you within hours, if not you know, the next day. So why would you go into a shop in a high street and then wait two weeks for the, for the product to come into the shop and it, to get sent to you? Um, what's happening in retail, certainly in the retail spaces that are getting it right, is experiential shopping is becoming a thing. So what uh, delivery services at the moment can't offer me, or they could potentially offer me in, in, in the virtual sense, we'll get to that in a, sense, in, in a minute, but physically they can't offer me hands-on with a product, like a new keyboard. How does it type? What does it sound like? Is it good for gaming or whatever it is that you want it for? Uh, whereas a high street store can do that. Automation means not only um, uh, are uh, civic spaces where shops are generally located going to be safer and, and less polluted, they're also going to change because when, when cars can drop you off and then move off or or buses and automated trams or whatever, move off and park themselves out of a city centre. The city centre no longer needs to be this busy traffic hub. It can be a much greener space. It can have spaces full of trees and interesting outdoor architecture. And that means that retail will change. It will come out onto the street and it will use those spaces to create the very experiential shopping experiences that it needs to in order to evolve. So that's quite a, a, an abstract prediction uh, of what the next big technology will be. Um, but also, of course, artificial intelligence has to be in that list. It's probably the number one choice. Um, and within AI, I think some of the big technologies that we're going to, to witness very, very soon uh, are going to be entertainment based. So um, augmented reality, evolution of, uh, of virtual and augmented spaces, mixed reality, uh, the metaverse, so the interconnected notion of, of buying something in the metaverse that you can then wear, for example, in various gaming or entertainment or social experiences, taking that out onto the streets into these new leafy areas um, where uh, you can choose for information to be uh, superimposed over buildings, navigation, deals, entertainment content, whatever it be, uh, gaming experiences that take place outside. Um, AI is going to drive um, some of that technology. And then other big technologies are going to be maybe in biotech, maybe in health, uh, uh, new materials, science driven again by AI. These are all uh, innovations that I think answer that question. What can audiences expect to learn from my keynote, uh, 30 Days of AI? So the concept behind 30 Days of AI, as the name suggests, is that I gave my life over wherever possible to various AI services across a spectrum of, of different offerings to try and enable AI to lead my life for a month. Uh, and the outcome was, some of the outcomes were amazing. Some of them were really interesting. Some of them were hilariously bad. Um, what you can expect from it is a colorful, entertaining, uh, but also profound, deep uh, experience around AI and, and an opportunity to see in, in a tangible, meaningful way, not just where we are right now with artificial intelligence, but also where we're going to be in the next one, five and ten years. Uh, I'll give you some examples. Um, so I enter the room on a, uh, a hoverboard for real. I won't explain anymore. I'll just leave it there. Um, I've always done that. In my previous speech, um, the thousand year decade, where I used to focus primarily on exponential growth and the way that it can help us to predict in business and, and, and life where things are going to go. Um, I enter on the hoverboard and the opening speech that I give to you if you're uh, employing me to do a keynote was written by AI and I have I have various versions of that uh, AI opening uh, one is a rap and the other one is Shakespearean verse uh, and then I've also got just plain English so that it's nice and eloquent and and pointed depending on what the client wants so there's an example um, some of the things that I talk about is the experience that I had attempting to bulk up and get uh, fit and strong so i used a number of different artificial intelligence services some on my phone some involving a piece of equipment and cameras to try and 
improve my physical health. And the outcome of that was quite surprising. Um, I did bulk up, but I also started to have a pain in my right side. So I asked the AI, AI what that might be, uh, and it gave me a diagnosis. I then went to an actual human doctor and I gave the human doctor a diagnosis from the AI. I predicted what the AI, uh, uh, sorry, I, I told him that the AI had predicted a certain outcome for my, my consultation with the doctor. The doctor immediately said, the AI is completely wrong. He then examined me and he gave me the actual diagnosis. I tell you what, I'm gonna tell you what it was, right? So the AI predicted that the sensation I was having in my abdomen was a urinary tract infection. As soon as I told that to the doctor, he immediately laughed and said that it was highly unlikely based on his experience. Uh, he said, I think it's probably a hernia. And so he examined me and it was a small hernia in the side of my abdomen, which could, I'm not gonna say it was, but it could have been caused by the AI workout program. So that's completely unexpected. Um, I then talk about lots of other stuff. So using the AI to code, I code my website. I come up with a new marketing plan for some other uh, aspects of my business and I roll them out. Uh, AI provided me with a number of side hustles, one or two of which I actually attempted, one of which actually made a profit within 30 days. Uh, so that's the general uh, nature of it. It's, it's upbeat, it's, it's different, uh, but it's also um, deep and thought provoking. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope, I hope you'll enjoy it. 30 days of AI.